Welcome to episode 19. So this week I'll be talking about STL file type. So let us begin. So to start it off this episode, I want to tell you a misconception. So when you're 3D printing, right, and you want a circle, and you expect a circle, actually what you get is not really a circle because they're actually made out of faceted edges, as you can see from the image shown. Why this is so is basically because your CAD model does have a circle, but then when you convert it into the STL file format, it becomes a faceted edge instead. So this is a common misconception that I would want to start this episode off with. So the aims and learning outcomes of this episode is quite simple. Firstly is to explore what is an STL file, how is it defined in the ASCII file format, its advantages, disadvantages, and some problems relate, related to an STL file. So in the learning outcomes, hopefully you'll be able to write how the ASCII STL file type is being defined as, as for example, for, for one triangle. And next, I hope you'll be able to state the advantages and disadvantages of STL. And lastly, to list some problems related to STL. So yes, next. So a basic introduction of what an STL is, basically it's a file type created for rapid prototyping by 3D system. So that's why you can see it's an approximate of the actual CAD file. However, now that we're actually using it for additive manufacturing, we would want more resolution in our 3D models instead. So basically it's a triangular representation of a CAD model. So basically a CAD model can be also be defined as made out of many many triangles with many many triangles then it becomes almost like a curved surfaces but when you reduce the number of triangles as, as you can see from the image shown it becomes a more faceted model which you usually see in 3d printing 3d printed part currently especially the low end 3d printers so yeah that's next so now let's see how the each one triangle or one facet is defined. Basically each facet, that yellow triangle, is defined by its normal, the red color line, and by three vertices, the three blue dots. So with this four information, you are able to define that triangle in a Cartesian coordinate. So each of the, each of the triangle is defined by 12 numbers since like the normal requires three numbers because it's x y and z so each facet is defined by 12 numbers so next so stl files can have two formats ASCII. it's a human readable format which what you'll see on the left side of the presentation and then there's a binary format which is non-human readable because it's just zeros it's just numbers and but it takes up less space if you put it if you save it as a binary format but both are virtually the same so let's take a look at what does the ASCII format look like basically triangle model this sentence just specify what you save your model as be it a cube you save your your model as Santa Claus or a person the model the name of the model will appear there then the next line would say is facet normal basically this once the coordinate of the normal, then outer loop. Basically, you just go in a, either anti-clockwise or clockwise direction, but it has to be in the same direction. And you just input in the vertex number, which is basically just the coordinates of each of the vertices. And then it ends loop, end facets, and end solid. So basically, this is what you'll see for if you open up your STL file. Yeah next so now we move on to the advantages and disadvantages of stl the advantages are that um, stl is a very simple method to represent 3d model basically this is important so that the probably the next video the slicing is much easier to calculate because it's all mainly just vertices and linear lines then stl is also flexible as you can see, the number of triangles can be increased or decreased by various softwares for better resolution. 
So if you if you just cat your model on SOLIDWORKS or maybe some other programs and you convert it to, to STL, usually there is a option that says whether you want it to be a coarse mesh or a fine mesh. But then even this, it can be further improved by other softwares. Next, STL files are also easy to handle and transferable, basically because it's just 12 numbers for each triangle. So basically it's quite easy to transfer it to another file format. Next, the disadvantages is that it has large memory size as compared to CAD data. So basically a single curve plane could be defined by a single equation in a CAD software as mentioned in the previous video. However, for STL file the curve surfaces will have to be broken up to individual triangle surfaces. So that's why the number of data is more. No topological information unordered. Basically this means that STL file just has information of the triangles but it doesn't have the information of how each triangles are like bonded together. Basically the computer has to like read all the triangles and then just show the triangles but there's no relationship between triangle 1 and triangle 2. So basically that it is. So next. So now we are at to the last part on what some issues on STL file format. Basically there are like three main issues. Missing facets. Missing facets is quite easy to understand. Basically when you convert it to an STL file, sometimes there might be some gaps. Why is this so? Because maybe you create your model out of a surface modeler and then your two surfaces appear your two surfaces in your CAD model appear to be joined together. However, they are not actually joined together. So the gap actually will result in a missing facet. So this usually is not the case if you use a solid modeler like SOLIDWORKS. Next we have uh, overlapping facets. Overlapping facets occur because from the previous slides you know that STL files are a bunch of 12 numbers. So imagine if the 12 numbers are like rounded up or rounded down, then the exact coordinate of the vertices are not overlapping each other. And like I told you that STL file does not have topological data. So basically it doesn't know that triangle 1 and triangle 2 are supposed to be side by side to each other. So basically it just reads the coordinates and then just place them in the 3D space, in the 3D coordinate system. So I think that's quite easy to understand as well. Lastly, we have a degenerate facet. So degenerate facet is what I want to look, I want to give you more into detail. So basically it is is because that for SCL file format, right, they, has to, they have to follow this rule. The rule is that each triangle must share two vertices with each of its adjacent triangles. So basically you can see on the left side of the picture, the yellow color beige looking triangles. They both share two vertices, the one at the top, top left, right, and the one in the middle. However, for the case of the green triangle with the beige triangle, they do not share two vertices. They, they, as you can see, they only share like one vertices for each, each. So this is a problem. So this is an issue with STL file format. So yeah, next. So yes, we have reached the summary of this episode on STL file format. I hope you are able to write how the ASCII STL file formats are defined, especially if given a single facet, how would you write the STL file format? So as you can see, it will take a very long time if you want to like write the STL file format of an entire model, because there might be 10,000 over triangles or even more. Next, I hope you are able to state the advantages and disadvantages of STL. Mainly, STL is a very simple file format for, for the next operations like slicing, I believe that's the case. And also, disadvantages are that it doesn't have any topological data. What it means again is that the triangles are made are just created based on the coordinates and the normals. 
the computer doesn't have an doesn't have a relationship to say that triangle one the green triangle has to be next to the orange triangle and that they have to share the same edge so this is what the STL file doesn't have and it causes a bit of error as you can see in the previous slide so then I hope you're able to list some problems related to STL STLs and for a more practical note, if you have some problems related to STL, there is the software called Magix or NetFab that can help you fix the STL file. So that would make your 3D printing life better. So yeah, let's go on to the references. So moving on to the references, I would like to thank Professor Jacob Gunn for his lecture. For his module on prototyping and rapid prototyping module in NTU and M6423, Thank you a lot, so because it helped me understand what STL file format is. Next, I would like to thank Wikipedia on the image on the circular. You can see the CAD models are circular, but the STL files are actually faceted. So that's pretty cool. And next, I want to thank farsightlens.com, basically to show you that a curved surfaces can be triangular, can be made out of triangles. As it's like thousands of triangles, it becomes a curved surface. Very little triangles, it becomes a faceted surface. Next, I'd like to thank the Professor George Hart, his module on CSE325, Computer Science and Sculpture. Basically, he had that model, he had that illustration on the triangles, in which I could then show you how the STL file format is written. Lastly, I would like to thank Nova Edge for, for their illustration on the degenerate facet. So that's very important too. Yeah. So thank you once again for listening to episode 19. I hope you understand about STL file. I think there should be one more episode left on how the STL files are sliced or how CAD models are sliced in the next episode. So I thank you very much and yeah, stay tuned.